All right, guys, let's talk about a gun that doesn't actually get that much airtime on the YouTubes, which is kind of sad and kind of ironic. Now, what this is for most people, and they're probably like, what the heck, you know, obviously this is a SIG P320. You get tons of airtime on YouTube, especially because a lot of them like to shoot themselves accident or not necessarily accidentally, but without any warning and uh, unprompted, supposedly. Now, there are definitely some videos out there like Grand Thumb that went over and attempted to definitely try to get one of these to discharge on its own or by itself and were unsuccessful. So take that for what it's worth. But, but today we're gonna go over just a general overall discussion of this gun, my experiences with it, um, shooting it, and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the EOTech on here, the E-Flex, and uh, we're also gonna talk about why I carry this, when I carry it, and uh, why I chose this gun. So first off, let's go over why I picked this gun and why I chose it, like what, uh, what were the reasons for you know wanting a X10 in the first place? So for me, I think it's kind of unique, maybe not exactly super unique, but at least kind of unique, and that is that I live in Alaska and a part of Alaska where bears are very prevalent, and I, once again, being an out, reasonably outdoorsy person, like to go outside, like to hike, like to backpack, like, like to bike, like to do all the things outside, you know, that one typically does. And because of the high bear presence, there's a very high chance of running into them, even accidentally, and so this is a gun that I can consider not necessarily to be my favorite bear defense gun and I don't think the 10 mil is the best of the best for bears but what I like about this gun is that it gives me a very good flexibility that I can you know go about a you know, urban, modern life, doing what I need to do, going to the grocery stores. And then if I want to go, you know, hiking or want to be outdoors um, at a later point in time, I can have something that gives me adequate protection and adequate defense against black bears, smaller brown bears. And like I said, without having to sacrifice, you know, like this is a good gun to have out and about running errands, but then also if I just so happen to, while well, doing those other things in life, find myself going on a trail and, oh no, encountered a bear, something like this gives me a really good, um, at least sense of security for bear protection. And so I like this gun in the regards to, and wanted to get this gun in regards to that duality of being able to have a firearm that is not only capable and competent in, you know, a self-defense situation, but also can handle bears. Now, I will say to to be perfectly clear, I would highly recommend swapping out ammos, and that's what I do. I have two different magazines, one loaded with critical defense, Hornady's critical, or I should say critical duty, technically. This is Hornady's uh, critical duty in 10 mil with the um, flex tip points on them. So it's, in my opinion, a pretty decent um, hollow point styled uh, ammunition for self-defense. Now, the nice thing about 10 mil is that just about any hollow point is going to be pretty good. There's really no soft or light 10 mil loads. Pretty much every self-defense 10 mil load is going to be pretty darn hot. So the nice part is you really don't have to worry about like, oh, nine mil versus nine mil plus P. Um, like in my nine mils, I run plus P plus. Um, so this, like pretty much every 10 mil loading is very hot. So these are effective in that regard. So anyways, um, yeah, so that is the core premise to why I wanted a X10 or P320 X10. Now, in regards to choosing a SIG P320, um, the reason why I chose this is it's just a solid platform, really great, love the form factor and the overall feel, a little bit more than a Glock, um, in my opinion. Now, there's not too much divergence from this and a Glock 21. They do a lot of the same things. I will say the X10 out of, out of box is more slightly more expensive handgun, definitely has a much better trigger, is of course a flat trigger and has a an amazing reset for me in my opinion i really like it um, but aside from that there's really not too much difference um, it is just a generally more updated gun within reason now i also chose to throw an eotech eflex on here and suppressor height sights and i definitely wanted the suppressor height sights because the eflex as we'll get into in just a little bit is not the brightest and so in some super bright conditions having those uh, just normal iron sights on there 
um, is very important because you cannot see that dot very effectively. So keep that in mind, take that for what it's worth. So overall, how my experience has been with the X10, honestly, I haven't really had too many issues with it. Um, no failures to feed, no failures to fire, but I've only realistically fired about 200 rounds through this gun. This is a 10 mil, so the, um, in typical 10 mil fashion, while the ammo is readily available, it is still not super cheap. Depending on what range ammo you're getting, you're still spending over 50 cents a round. So I'm not super eager to send, you know, 300 rounds down the range because it's 150 bucks and and uh, it's definitely a lot. In addition to that too, 10 mil is, as many people have mentioned before, a very snappy cartridge. And so it is not the most pleasant round to just shoot high volumes of. Something like nine mil, I can sit down and shoot 100, 150 rounds in one session very easily. Um, this, I would definitely be feeling it by about 50 rounds. Um, just because the recoil impulse on 10 mil is just very snappy. It's not a very pleasant or forgiving uh, recoil impulse. And that kind of does get me to the next point of this gun. I think for my purposes, I think it does bridge the gap very well in being a gun that you can once again use in a CCW, true CCW fashion. You can run errands, you can live your life pretty normally, and if you need to do something like take down a bear, this is a solid option. But uh, you do always weigh that factor of if you do unironically CCW at 10 mil, um, <clears throat> keep in mind that uh, the shot recovery is significant. So it's not going to be like a 9 mil where you can just sit there and boom, 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 really fast you do have to really work on the recovery of your handgun and <clears throat> you do really have to work on the recovery of your handgun this isn't going to be like a super fast like i said just boom 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 laser beam that you can just just sit there and shoot all day something like the springfield prodigy is exactly that it just basically sits there while you pull the trigger super fast very little recovery time uh 10 mils by and large are not that they're very snappy and they are a handful for being a semi-auto not to say that they are excessive um, i've shot 50 aes i've owned desert eagles before and so i'm not trying to say that this is a lot of recoil it's just a snappy impulse and it takes a little bit longer to get that gun back down on target so Take that for what it's worth. I don't know if I would, like, if you are looking for a 10 mil to just EDC or CCW um, because you want the 10 mil power, I'd probably advise against it unless you have a specific reason, something like bear defense, uh, like something along those lines to help drive that extra desire for more power. Um, ultimately, a 9 mil protecting yourself against another person or even smaller things like dogs. Um, a, a 10 mil is definitely pushing it for overkill. A nine mil is completely fine for those um, situations. Anyways, that is um, my experience with it. The X10's held up perfectly fine. And I'm definitely not sad that I got the five inch barrel. I really do like the five inch barrel. They make a compensated version of this gun that has a four and a quarter, four and a half inch comped barrel to it. And I personally like this one primarily for the extra barrel length, the extra velocity, and the extra just overall recoil control that comes from having that little bit longer handgun. So in those regards, no regrets for just getting a stock plain Jane X10. Now, as far as the E-Flex goes, this is where I kind of feel a little bit more mixed. Personally, if I could do it all over again, I would highly recommend going with like a Romeo um, or some kind of uh, SIG made optic, especially a closed emitter optic. SIG is making some really fantastic um, red dots and reflex sights, and they are made in China, but they're really on par with your hollow suns in value. So I personally, if I could do it all over again, I would recommend going with something like either a hollow sun 507K or something along the lines of a SIG made red dot. Um, I did choose the EOTech E-Flex because I wanted to try it out partly um, and also it is a pretty good deal it is a u.s made optic for about 350 bucks however there's a few things about it and i've covered this in particularly quite a few shorts but um, these 
either one of these, these are the arrows for up and down. So your higher and lower intensity on your red dot sight. And uh, these guys, either one of these, if you press and hold them, will shut this sight or optic off. And so if even if you set this gun down on a flat surface, um, you, just the weight of a loaded handgun can be enough to turn that red dot emitter off. Now, some people initially mistake this as the optic turning itself off, but it is the pressure that you're putting on those um, magnification or intensity switches that turns it off. It's not necessarily the optic itself. In addition to this too, some people complained about loss of zero. I haven't found that to be an issue, but the other issue that I have ran into is this sight is not daytime bright. And what I mean by that is if you point this sight or this red dot um, and you're like outside on a bright sunny day and you point this at a light target, like say paper, you will absolutely lose that dot. That dot will disappear from existence. And that is because the E-Flex only has eight settings for intensity. And so this really shines in, you know, kind of more realistic settings in not so super daytime bright settings and uh, those types of, once again, situations and settings. So overall, I'm not super upset with the E-Flex. I'm not like, this thing's a hunk of junk, let me throw it off my gun. If I could do it all over again, I would probably not buy the E-Flex again, and I definitely don't recommend it, but it's also not bad. One thing that is a huge pro to it is in typical EOTech fashion, the glass clarity is some of the cleanest uh, reflex sight or red dot sight that I've ever seen. Um, comparing this directly to my Hollow Suns, my Vortexes, uh, um, my Trigicons, this is a cleaner glass. And like I said, I have red dots from your cheaper manufacturers like Vortex and Holosun. I have red dots from Trigicon. I have a broad spectrum of um, red dots to you know look at. And I will say I directly compared this to my RMR, directly compared it to like said the Holosun and all that stuff. And uh, it is a cleaner glass than those. So it is a very clean optic and it's a pretty large field of view, so that is a pro to it, but um, the non-daytime bright uh, red dot kind of defeats the purpose of the red dot in the first place, so I do not like it for that. But once again, I do have suppressor height sights on here, and uh, with the suppressor height sights, I always have something to use to aim, so I just, if I can't see the dot, just go back to the suppressor height sights and use those. So that's what I do, that's my system with this gun. But once again, if I'm running along on a trail, see a bear, oftentimes those are not super bright situations. So I can use this, um, the iron sights of this gun to get a good optic, or sorry, those are not daytime bright situations. So oftentimes the red dot will work perfectly fine. So. Anyways, kind of a side uh, discussion about the EOTech E-Flex. Not my favorite. It has, for those wondering, um, been on here for almost all my shooting. I think actually, yes, all my shooting of this gun. So all, I think like 150 rounds um, or something like that. Um, however many rounds, 200 rounds I've put through this thing. Um, all the rounds I've put through this gun, the E-Flex has been on here and it's held up to the recoil. I think there were some people who, maybe with the initial generations of the E-Flex, it had some issues, but from everything I've ran this E-Flex through, um, it's held up perfectly fine to the 10 mil recoil. And that is really saying something because this is a slide mounted 10 mil, um, or this is a slide mounted optic on a 10 mil and the recoil is jarring. So if it can hold up to a 10 mil, um, side mounted it can probably hold up to just about anything um, a lot of people run these on shotguns and stuff like that so anyways um, I digress the X10 is overall pretty cool um, I tend to run it appendix style like I said it fits the bill for me very well I like the fact that I can have something that like I said I can throw things like these critical duties Hornby critical duties in here have a you know 15 plus one handgun that is double stack very capable very good very well pointing handgun shoots nicely uh, i love the trigger on it because um, this does have the x series flat trigger on it it's not the standard you know p320 um, trigger so it has that flat trigger that is super good super clean pull and i uh, love the trigger on it 
it's nice gun for CCW and EDC, but then also, you know, serves double duty because I have genuinely, truly been in situations where, you know, I'm out running errands and uh, either the girlfriend and I or myself and a friend or someone, you know, or even just myself sometimes, you know, want to go on a hike. And I have personally been in those situations where, once again, wasn't really intending to go out into the woods or, you know, go on a hike super far out. Did encounter a bear. Luckily, did not have to dispatch it. Nothing really came of it. So, wasn't a huge deal. But I had a firearm with me that could take down the bear if it decided to attack. So they are real situations that I have actually been in. So having a gun like this, having a 10 mil for those situations, those like urban to backcountry situations is what I really like having a 10 mil for. It gives me that ability to say, hey, I can go run some errands, go out on a hike. I can have a gun to do both because realistically carrying around my 44 mag revolver, you know, um, CCW, I don't even have, I don't even have a CCW holster for it. So there's that. And also too, it's just not very realistic. So those are kind of the, the realities of the X10 and why I have it, why I like it. And overall, I think it's a really solid firearm. I definitely recommend if you are looking for a more modernized double stack 10 mil semi-auto, semi um, the X10 is definitely a really solid choice. I would highly recommend looking into and uh, like I said, if you do get one and you do want to put a dot on it, just go with either a Leupold Delta Point Pro or go with one of SIG's um, optics for that same mounting surface or footprint. You won't regret it. They are really good optics um, for red dots. And uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.